What's going on guys and welcome to another gameplay video. Today we are going to be jumping into a Silver Quill aggro deck. Uh, just as a quick heads up as well before we actually jump into this, uh, you may notice that down below the video you have a little join button. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, I highly encourage you to do so, but if you would also like to become a member of the It Resolves YouTube channel, you can do that via that little join button down below. There's also a link in the description. Please consider doing that. That is a paid membership, so please don't feel like you have to. But if you would like to support the channel, you unlock some emotes, you get a badge, you get all kinds of fun stuff, we would of course really appreciate it. That does mean a lot to us, and any and all support is greatly appreciated. But let's jump into the deck, guys. This is Silver Quill Aggro. The whole idea of this list is to get a lot of value out of our aggro creatures hopefully going over the top with a few of them and then really finishing off the game with things like Silver Quill Command or bringing things back with Agadine's Awakening. So uh, as far as the creature end of things goes, uh, in the one drop slot, we've got Usher of the Fallen. This basically every time it attacks, we get to spit out another creature. We do have to pay some mana to do it, but this just allows us to kind of keep flooding the board as we need to. Uh, we do have Luminarch Aspirant here to throw some counters around. Professor of Symbology, that does allow us to have access to quite a number of really nice little lessons uh, that we get to pull out from the side. We've got Silver Quill Silencer, which is going to really punish the opponent based on what's in their hand. You'll notice as well that we've got things like Elite Spellbinder uh, that can allow us, oh, and Humiliate, uh, which allow us to look at the opponent's hand and then be able to effectively um, make an informed decision on what we should choose with the Silencer. So hopefully that pays off. Uh, Elite Spellbinder, of course, looks at the hand, makes it difficult to cast a spell. Uh, Raideen, uh, God of the Worthy, obviously really slowing down some of the big mana decks, uh, which is kind of the goal. Skyclave Apparition dealing with stuff on the opponent's side uh, if they've got it. Uh, as far as the non-creature stuff goes, uh, we do have a one of Blood Chief's Thirst. This just allows us to take care of Planeswalkers, uh, any kind of creature, whatever we need to. It's a one of, so it's nothing crazy, but it does give us that out. Uh, we do have Vanishing Verse, which works very well also. Uh, humiliate, we already mentioned, reveal the opponent's hand as a new card. Uh, you choose an online card from it, that player discards a card, and then you do put a 1-1 counter on target creature we control. That helps buff up our stuff and get those attacks in as needed. The Awakening helps bring stuff back, and then like I said, that Silver Quill command really, really goes over the top to finish the game. Uh, which hopefully we can do pretty easily. We do have a little bit of tech in the land slot, Castle Ardenvale to spit out tokens, and a couple Castle Lockdwains as well to keep the card draw rolling. But that's the whole deck. That's it. That's the easiest thing. I love it. Hopefully, hopefully, this goes really well. Um, I do have high hopes because I, I really like this deck. I've played it a little bit uh, and had decent success with it, but we're going to try and get through four games at least uh, to make sure that we get a good, just a smattering of options to see how it goes. Uh, the question is, do we like this hand? It's not amazing, but we do have the Thirst and a Spellbinder. I'm going to keep it, and we're going to see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. This isn't great. It's very land heavy. Ideally, we'd like to have like two to three lands, not quite this many, um, but that's okay. I'm going to lead on the swamp. Uh, it does represent more removal uh, than anything else. And here, this is actually really nice. So what we're going to do is just go ahead, Blood Chief's Thirst, this ed Edgewall Innkeeper. These uh, adventure decks really thrive on the Innkeeper, and I do not want them to be able to draw some cards. So... We're shutting that down early. Uh, hopefully the Spellbinder can keep some pressure off as well. Uh, just go ahead and throw this out. We'll Spellbinder now. Um, hopefully hitting like a Bone Crusher Giant, maybe, uh, would be kind of the best. Ooh, lots of good stuff on the opponent's end here. Uh, so let's see. They can get a green. They can Fire Prophecy. Uh, hmm. Yeah, let's do this. So next turn, we can actually make them sacrifice the Kazandu Mammoth uh, with the Silver Quill Command. Uh, if you don't know, this does a lot of stuff. So it does get plus three, plus three, and flying until the end of the turn. Return target creature with mana value two or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. Target player draws a card and loses a life, or target opponent sacrifices a creature. Uh, we are going to go sacrifice the creature route. And then what else is the question? Might just be flying. Um... The other option, honestly, is just to take a hit. Uh, that's not a terrible option either, because uh, we can make them sacrifice later and get that Terror of the Peaks out of the way. 
I kind of like that route, honestly. Let's get Terror of the Peaks out of here. Uh, and I'm going to put the counter here. And we'll attack in. So we are going to take a hit here, but crucially now, they just don't have much to do. Uh, they can Fire Prophecy one of our two things, which is fine. Um, but we also just kind of get to play around it. Uh, and here they're going to hit the Elite Spellbinder. Makes sense because that is the Flyer. Uh, so I think that that's fair. But, wow, and they did not attack. Oh my gosh, that's interesting. Uh, didn't expect that at all. Um, all right, let's do this. Target player sacks a creature. It might just be to draw a card, but... <sighs> hmm. I think it is to draw a card. Uh, we aren't going to deal enough damage here to, to make this matter too much, and I'd like to make sure that we've got enough stuff to do. Uh, I'm going to play another Usher of the Fallen. Just to get as much out as possible, we do have the Castle Lockthwain on the field, so we are going to want to uh, really empty our hand here and hopefully get in for some major damage um, very soon. Good to see it's a tapped land. That just means that they probably don't have a Terror of the Peaks in hand or anything like that. They are probably just going to... Oh, they're not going to attack in. Okay. Uh, well, with that in mind... Hmm... I really wish we had a sec or a third white source, excuse me, uh, because then we would be able to activate these two. But let's go ahead and get this out of here. They may have a bone crusher, uh, but regardless, we're we're keeping the damage train going, which is what this deck does, I think, relatively well. Um, it's not perfect, don't get me wrong, but it really pushes that, I think, uh, to an exceptional level. Very curious to see Robber of the Rich, by the way, in a deck like this. I guess this is just Landfall, maybe. But then why have the innkeeper? Right? Okay. I mean, that's very good, uh, for sure. Oh, and there's that land we were looking for. Um, hmm. So, the question becomes, what do we want to do here? We can just draw. Uh, we can just play this. We can attack, uh, in which case we can spit out another token. Doesn't seem great, to be honest. Um, but they do kind of have to block. You know what? I'm going to take the slow route here. I don't know if this is the right play or not. Um, let's attack and activate the ability here. I'm sure they trade off here, and that's kind of fine. Um, it's not great for us, but it does get rid of the only creature that they have. Uh, which puts us, again, in a decent position. There's the Terror of the Peaks. That's a little scary. Um, and maybe too much for us to deal with, but we'll see. Huh. Um, I don't honestly know what the, the worry here is. Um, <laughs> they could have so many things. Uh, I mean, I guess we just name another Terror of the Peaks. Could be a lot. Um... We'll go ahead and draw a card here. Okay, uh, that potentially gives us an answer then. So that's good. That's helpful. Um, what do they have? The Great Hinge? Sure. Gonna attack for five, I assume. Maybe not. Okay, they're not. Fair enough. Uh, let's play land. Let's play Professor. Uh, and we do have a pretty aggressive play here that we can drop if we would like, uh, which is kind of nice. We'll see. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we do have enough just to play the mascot, to be honest. Um, the other option is reduce. I'm going to get mascot. Uh, the reason being, if we drop this Luminarch Aspirant and throw the counter on the Silver Quill Silencer, we actually just get to attack in here, and if they want to trade, great. Uh, because that's just... Kind of a free kill on our end. Um, they've already hit two Terror of the Peaks, so I'm not tremendously worried about anything here. They gain two life back, sure. I don't know. We might... I mean, it's going to be close. Um, all right, cool. We did it. Game one is ours, guys. We did it. Uh, that was great. Uh, I think we just kind of outvalued them long term. Almost. Almost, guys. We're almost there. We're going to rank up soon. Um, all right, I feel pretty good about that. I think we played okay. 
Uh, it wasn't perfect, but I do think that uh, big lesson always kind of seals the deal in those situations, so that felt pretty good. Let's go ahead and open up a pack, see what we get. Uh, multiple choice, very cool card. Um, not played with multiple choice yet. I'd be interested to see how that actually works. Uh, like if it's if it's good in the meta and like a control deck or anything like that. All right, game two, guys. Let's see if we can do it. Um, and just as a reminder, uh, because we are not, we're, we're recording a lot of this gameplay solely because we can't stream it. We've been having so many network issues lately that it's just like, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of sad because I want to stream really badly, but we just can't. Uh, and so we're we're here. We're doing the best we can. Uh, and thankfully, recorded videos do okay too. Great way to support is again that join button. If you would like to become a member of our community, that is a great way to do so. Um, and hopefully, you find it worth it. Um, that was actually a pretty good draw. We kind of needed a second white source for the Skyclave apparition, so I'm pretty happy with that. Looks like blue red aggro. I'm assuming frostbite is a thing. We could humiliate here. I'm going to wait. Um, we'll see if that's worth it or not. If they play any mono-colored spell, we just get to Vanishing Versit. Uh, if it's a creature, of course. Um, we'll see. We will see, we will see. Right now, they're just playing a lot of land. Perfectly fine. Uh, this could be a counter spell. It could also be Alron's Epiphany. A lot of these kinds of decks are like counter burns, so that is something we have to consider here. Uh, let's throw Castle Lockswain into the mix here, um, and I'll try for an Aspirant. Chances are this is going to die, but I do want to stick a creature before we humiliate, uh, if we can, just to get max, max, uh, max output out of it. I don't know what, I'm, max value. I don't know why that was so hard for me to figure out. Um, here though, this actually works out okay, so we're going to Skyclave Apparition, hit the Bone Crusher. Get that out of there. Uh, thankfully, this does not trigger, which is kind of nice. Here, they just get their creature back, but we do have Vanishing Verse to deal with it. Um, and they are running slowly out of resources here, while as we have quite a bit left. Uh, we're drawing quite a lot of land, though. That's the only downside here. Um, and there's another one. <laughs> uh, we do need to get another black source down, so let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and humiliate now that we don't have any creatures in hand. Uh, it kind of feels bad, but it's not much else we can do. We just kind of need to get something out of the hand here. Um, this is going to trigger that counter, which is fine, and then we'll just get rid of that. <clears throat> All right. So basically, we ate a card with the humiliate, and then also... Oh, man. Well, now I wish we had saved the, uh, the vanishing verse. Um... But we will see what we can do here. So let's drop this. We're obviously going to throw the Elite Spellbinder out. They've only got one card in hand, and this is going to slow it down. Though they've got basically a million mana with this Goldspan Dragon. They really don't need uh, a lot of lands out, so that's kind of nice for them. They can just kill this too, yeah. All right, you got me. Uh, this is just a very solid Is It deck. Uh, or Prismari deck, excuse me. I have to get used to the new names. Uh, I've been very bad about that lately. I've even like titled some of our videos incorrectly. Wow, we are just getting very unlucky. Look how many lands we have drawn. Uh, we just have to draw a card. <laughs> it's all we can do. This has nothing in their hand, do they? They just have nothing. This is uh, for our, yeah, foretold. <laughs> I just had nothing to do. Why not? Um, <clears throat> yep. We need something. I don't even know what we could get here. Uh, that is not it. All right, let's go ahead and concede. That was just a lot of terrible draws. We had so many lands. Oh my goodness, we just kept drawing lands. All right, game three. We're at one and one. Not a terrible, I mean, the first game was great. Uh, unfortunately, that was just a lot of bad draws, so I don't know that we could have played much differently. Obviously, firing off Humiliate when they have nothing in hand and we have no creatures is not worth it, but we just had nothing to do, so I figured, hey, we'll throw it out there. Um, all right, what do we have? What do we have? Uh, yeah, this is a keep. Some good interaction in the early turns with the Skyclave Apparition to follow, uh, and now this is even better, so 
we have a nice little run here. We'll see if this works out. Uh, very potentially the Witherbloom style deck, which is a very frustrating deck indeed. Uh, I'm going to throw this out here. Uh, the Usher is a pretty good card to get down early if you can start attacking in, and following this turn, what we could potentially do is Skyclave Apparition uh, and then get in a free attack with the Usher. Interesting. All right. Uh, no clue on that one. I'll be honest. This is a weird weird card to see. Uh, didn't expect that at all. We're going to Skyclave Apparition here. Get that out of there and just uh, attack in. This very easily could be, given that we are in gold ranking, just kind of a budget list. Um, but hey, if they've got a good curve, they've got a good curve. So it may be very well that we could just uh, lose out here. Looks like, though, they may not have land, uh, which is unfortunate for them, great for us. Uh, let's go ahead and Elite Spellbinder here, then. This is going to prolong them even more. Uh, Blood Chief's Thirst, Binding... Agonizing Remorse. Uh, they've got quite a bit of decent stuff here. Um, I think it's just Blood Chief's Thirst. It's like the only... I mean, they can play Agonizing Remorse, sure, but like... I don't I don't care that much, uh, to be brutally honest. Um, Alright. That was just a bad draw on their end. Uh, 100%. So that does rank us up, though. We are now Platinum Tier 4. Go us. Let's go ahead and jump into Game 4. We are sitting at a 2-1 and one record. I'm liking it so far. I'll be honest. I really like this deck. Um, Elite Spellbinder really punishes hands like that where the opponents just don't have any lands because any card that they could feasibly play, you just make it impossible for them to. Um, and like they did still have the Agonizing Remorse, but then they had nothing else to do. Uh, and so that puts us in a really solid position, honestly. Um, yeah, I mean, we keep this two lands, one of each color, about as good as we can hope for here. It looks like mono white. Yeah. Uh, which is fine. I am going to go ahead and just kill the giant killer. Um, I'm going to try and play as efficiently as I can. We've got vanishing verse here to deal with something here if we need to as well. Interesting, and we actually can just deal with that. Um, I'm going to play the Aspirant. Any creature they play is going to have to take a turn, uh, which is nice for us. So I'm okay for them to just do something here. Okay. That's kind of fine. Um, certainly not a bad play, but it's not that great either. Um do this. I'm just going to go ahead and play this out then. It's just an effective blocker. If they've got a way to deal with it, if they've got another Skyclave Apparition, then that's going to take their turn um, and they get two damage in. Like, I don't particularly care about that. They played that tapped? That's confusing. Um, interesting. That might be an issue on their end. Okay. Interesting. Uh, worth noting, Vanishing Verse does get around the Selfless Savior trick, just so you know. And they have now committed to a good bit of mana on that, which is great. Uh, we could have traded, honestly. Didn't... Uh, well, yeah, we could have traded. But didn't really feel like we needed to. I'm going to Humiliate. This should put us in just a really nice position, to be honest. Uh, yep, get Luris out of here. Uh, Giant Killer still doesn't kill this, which is good. We need to keep it that way. Um, I'm going to kill the equipment. Uh, get rid of that. We could have gotten rid of the... The Skyclave Apparition, too, at, or instead of, but it kind of doesn't matter. We do have Vigilance, so we do just get to attack in here, too. Um, and we're in a position now where we can just feasibly outpower them. Uh, especially if they do just outright play that Giant Killer, we just get to drop the Aspirant and... Oh, very nice. Okay. Fair enough. You got it. 
Um, maybe it would have been better to hit the apparition because then we would have gotten a creature back. Um, but I didn't want them to keep that equipment around. I was a little worried about that. Interesting they are holding on to that giant killer. Um, I wouldn't really think that's the best play, to be honest. Uh, given our deck, that doesn't seem like the great way to do it. Uh, let's name giant killer. Let's go ahead and play the aspirant. I'm going to put the counter on the aspirant here. Uh, again, keeping this out of the giant killer range. Uh, I guess we should have named Chop Down, actually, not Giant Killer, but it's okay. All right, well, good news is that Spellbinder doesn't hit anything. Uh, bad news is we still don't have much going for us, right? Like, they can just attack in. We could trade if we want. They are going to play the Giant Killer. Wow. Okay, so this is a missed sequence from the opponent. What they should have done is played Giant Killer, then Elite Spellbinder. That way they could have pegged whatever card we drew. In this case, it's a land, so it doesn't actually matter, but... That would have been a very clean way to do it, uh, and they did not. So, kind of works out for us. Um, and in this case, now that we've gotten the value, I'm really okay with just blocking here <laughs> and trading off. They can use their selfless savior. We still get a trade out uh, because we're still one for one on creatures. We save ourselves a little bit of damage as well. And then this... Gets rid of the Elite Spellbinder. Easy enough. I'm going to put the counter on the Aspirant here. And I'm not going to attack. They can tap down, worth noting. Uh, they can tap down the 3-3. Three, three. Um, but crucially, we've got now two creatures out that they can't really, you know. So, do we want to trade these bad boys off? Um... Yeah, I think I do. I'm okay with this. Let's get these out of here. We are each going to get a 3-3 in return, which is just kind of fine. Um, oh, that's very good. Okay, so let's get rid of this giant killer. We get a counter. I'm going to put it on the 3-3 three, three here, um, and we pass. So now we have got blockers for everything, essentially. Um and it's just very dependent on whatever we draw. Wow. Okay, well, that was just a really good draw. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we probably can't beat that unless we get another Vanishing Verse. Um, we did fire that off early, so there wasn't necessarily a need to do that. Um, bit of a mistake on my end, potentially, but we're just dead here. And that's it. Quickly, quickly dead. Uh, well done, opponent. Unfortunately, they just that Maul was such a good draw. If they had drawn a land last turn, they would have been in pretty rough shape, but we're hitting a lot of lands, uh, which is okay. Um, but overall, guys, I think we are going to end it here. It's a little bit short, but overall, I think we did okay. Uh, I think we had some bad draws, especially in that second game where we just drew tons and tons of lands, but it was still a very fun list, and I think it has a lot of tech that it didn't necessarily have before. Um, now, I have seen a couple different versions of this list. Some of them run things, I mean, Luris obviously is an option, though you do have to keep in mind you can't have certain creatures in if you're going to do that. Um, and then some of them do run like more magecrafty abilities where you can kind of cycle through the deck and just get a lot of damage off at once. Both of those lists are very good, um, so I do recommend maybe looking around at some different Silver Quill lists, but I really like this deck. I think it's a very fun one, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Leave a like down below if you enjoyed it. Make sure you check out our membership option if you would like to join and support our community. We would really appreciate it. Please don't feel like you have to, but it would mean a lot. So thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next gameplay video.